Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new AMD Radeon RX 9060 XT. Keep in mind, AMD is releasing two different RAM variants. You get one with eight gigs or one with 16. We've got 16 gigs here. The version that we're going to be taking a look at in this video is the ASUS Tough Gaming RX 9060 XT 16 gig overclock edition. And I've been really excited about this card from AMD. Mainly because, you know, when it comes down to it, we've seen a bunch of new GPUs hit the market, but pricing is a little all over the place. But AMD's suggested retail on these cards starts at $299, and that's for the 8 gig model. Moving up to the RX 9060 XT with 16 gigs, $349. Hopefully, we'll see variants come real close to this price point. But again, in this video, we're taking a look at the ASUS Tough Gaming RX 9060 XT 16 gig overclock edition. Personally, I do like the look of this one, and around back we've got that vented exoskeleton, at least that's what they're calling it. Basically, it's a vented backplate. We've got a dual BIOS with this, so we've got a quiet and performance mode. This version is a 2.5 slot card, and it only requires one 8-pin PCIe power connector, and a little bit of RGB over here with that tough logo. It's got a triple fan design and it is using their new Axial Tech fans with dual ball bearings. So we've got super smooth operation here. And when it comes to the overall specs of the Overclock Tough Edition that we have here, like I mentioned, we've got the 16 gigabyte variant and this is utilizing GDDR6 running at 128 bit bus. Boost clock on this up to 3340 megahertz, 2048 stream processors, and they recommend at least a 550 watt power supply for this card. The test rig that I'm going to be using here is kind of a full tough build that I did a few months ago. This has been my main test rig. What we've got here is an Intel Core i7-14700K, 32 gigs of Viper RAM running at 7000 megahertz. I've got a 1000 watt power supply, which is definitely overkill for this card, but that's what's here with the rig we're going to be testing in. So with the CPU paired up with that RX 9060 XT, I'm not worried about, you know, any kind of bottleneck there. We're going to be able to get the maximum performance out of this card to see exactly what it does. Again, I do think it's a really sleek looking card. Love the gray accents here. We've got a little bit of RGB on the very end with that tough logo. This card could definitely make for a super clean build. And one of the big reasons I'm so excited about this card is the fact that uh, I do want to do a full SteamOS build using this card. I'll have that coming up in the next few days, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. With this test system, we will be running Windows 11 Pro, and as you can see, we've got the i7-14700K, 32 gigs of DDR5 at 7000, so we're good with the CPU and uh, RAM here. I'm not worried about any kind of bottleneck between these two. But of course, we're going to be testing the AMD Radeon RX 9060 XT. I did want to show you the TGP here, so we're going to run Furmark and it looks to be around 180 to 190 watts. Now uh, through GPU tweak three that ASUS offers, you can actually set this up to give it a 10% power boost. So you can go right up there to that 200 watt limit. And in turn, it should boost up a bit higher or at least to that maximum boost of 3340 here. So 3340 megahertz under an extreme load with that 10% up. And uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely hits those clocks. And throughout all of my testing, we will monitor temps and everything like that using hardware info. I've got it running right here in the background so we can see exactly what's going on with this. But so far, temps are looking good and I've already done some testing on this thing. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into some benchmarks. And with this, I really wanted to face it off against the 9070 non-XT and the 9070 XT variant. So the first one we have is 3D Mark Steel Nomad. On that 9060 XT, total score of 3,794. FPS sitting right there at 39. When it comes to the RX 9070 and the exact same test rig here, we got a total score of 5,795. And of course, the RX 9070 XT, which is kind of the boss right now, coming in over 7,000 with this benchmark. Moving over to 3D Mark Time Spy, 9060 XT, we got a total score of 17,134. Over there on the 9070, that's up to 24,902. And on that 9070 XT, we're at 28,598. 
And the final benchmark is 3D Mark Port Royal, more for uh, ray tracing here, that 9060 XT 9529. But uh, taking a look at the 9070 and that 9070 XT, we're coming in way ahead. But these are synthetic benchmarks, and now I want to take a look at some real-world benchmarks with a few games, just facing these three off against each other. And the first one we have here is Cyberpunk 2077 Ultra 1440p, no FSR. So we're not using any scaling here. It's a native 1440p. On that 9060 XT, 78, 9070, 114, and that 9070 XT up to 130. Next on the list, we've got Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, very high, 1440p, again, no FSR, 101 on the 9060 XT, 111 on the 9070, and 134 on that 9070 XT. So at least for this game, that 9060 isn't coming far behind the 9070 non-XT variant. The final one we have here is Black Myth Wukong, cinematic settings, 1440p, 100% scaling, 38 FPS on the 9060, and only 41 on that 9070. So with the synthetics, it definitely looked like the 9060 was going to come in way behind that 9070. But when it comes to real world gaming, this thing is keeping up way better than I thought it would. Now it's time to check out how this thing really performs. And the first game we have is Marvel Rivals 1440p Ultra Settings with FSR set to quality. Looking at an average of around 72 FPS, even when there's a ton of stuff going on. We've got a bunch of characters on screen, lots of particle effects going. So yeah, I mean, it's playable here at 1440 Ultra with a little bit of FSR. Next up, Spider-Man 2 at 1440p, very high FSR quality, no frame generation, and this actually performed way better than I thought it would. I figured we'd be in the 70s with it, with these settings that we're using. Again, we are using just a bit of FSR because we are working with a lower end card here. We're seeing an average across the board of 98 FPS. Oblivion Remastered 1440p Ultra, and in order to get the frame rate that we're seeing here outdoors, which is an average of around 76, I did have to take FSR to performance. So yeah, I mean, we had to kind of scale this thing back a little bit from 1440p with this game. Indoors, it jumps up over 100 FPS, but you know, we've got some draw distance going here. And uh, to tell you the truth, I do think that this kind of maxed out at 1080 Ultra with no FSR would be the way to go on the 9060 XT. And that's really if you don't want to use frame generation. Enabling frame generation will almost double our frame rate in most cases. Forza Horizon 5, and I knew this game was going to perform really well on the 9060 XT. I took this up to 4K extreme settings. We're not using any scaling, seeing an average of around 84 FPS with it. I personally don't play Fortnite, but I know a lot of people out there do, so I did want to test it here, and I just go into the party mode. 1440p epic with no scaling. We're seeing an average of around 114 FPS, and just turning FSR on to quality, we can get up to 135 on average. And finally, Doom the Dark Ages, 1440p Ultra with FSR set to quality. And I'll tell you, this game did have a few issues when it was first launched, and it still does. But once you get it working, it's a really good performer on most systems that I've been able to with at these least settings get this average of 83 FPS. When it comes to overall temps, this is something I really wasn't worried about with the tough version. This definitely looks like the uh, Asus Prime cooler that they use on the 9070, and it could be a bit different, but the size on this thing looks to be about the same. Average temps for 1440p gaming were only 64 degrees Celsius, and the maximum recorded temp that I hit through all of the 1440p gaming here was only 68 degrees Celsius. So we're nowhere near thermal throttling, and it does stay relatively quiet. Okay, so in my initial testing, yeah, this thing's putting down some great performance if we can hit that price point that AMD was kind of promising. And uh, they do make that 8 gig version. And in 2025, 8 gigs may seem a little on the low end side. Uh, for me, it definitely would be. But if you want a game at 1080 for esports games, then 8 gigs would be plenty. And you could save that money up front 
But to tell you the truth, I would definitely go for the 16 gig model just to make sure you have enough because this card does handle 1440p really well. I will have a couple more videos coming up with the 9060 XT. Of course, we need to test out SteamOS with this card and I've got some parts on the way. Hopefully they'll be here soon. It's going to be a relatively smaller form factor build, but keep in mind we still need to fit this 2.5 slot triple fan card in there. So it's not going to be ultra tiny, but I'm going to try to make it as small as possible. If you're interested in learning a little more about the ASUS Tough Gaming RX 9060 XT Overclock Edition, I'll leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see tested or running on this card, just let me know in the comments below. That's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.